I'm writing this feeling disturbed or hopeful. I'm feeling something I have never felt before. I just finished Dawson's Creek and completed the truly masterful two-part series finale, season six, episode 23, All Good Things, dot, 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 and 24, Come to an End. I cried. Now before you click off the video, don't worry and don't feel left out either. I understand most of my viewers probably haven't watched a single episode of Dawson's Creek, never mind 128 of them, but don't sweat it. Kevin Williamson's great artistic statement is really something you need to hear. You need to understand Williamson because analyzing his body of work has changed my entire outlook on the cinema and has directly informed damaged parts of my real life. His art made me better more completely incompleted. It's a good thing. It's actually great. I'll explain later. Williamson made his name by publicly humiliating, demonizing, and punishing cinephilia in Scream, Scream 2, and I Know What You Did Last Summer. He would create Dawson's Creek in 1998 only to leave the show after two remarkable seasons. He populated his show with deconstructed symbols of the cinephile, the intellectual, the clown, and the muse. Frank Capra, Audrey Hepburn, James Dean, and Marilyn Monroe. The show continued to rise in popularity even after Williamson's early departure and eventually crossed a historic bridge by featuring the first true on-television gay kiss in season three played with honesty and not played for laughs. Dawson's Creek had become a landmark American teen soap. In 2003, the show was ending after six seasons of fluctuating quality and somewhat inconsistent philosophy, and Williamson had returned to his broken archetypes to personally write the final bow himself. He had to make sense of the sentiment. Williamson is one of the most articulate writers in postmodern art. He knew all he wanted, no, all he had to say, what he must state and express with it. Imagine a postmodern Frank Capra, if you can conjure the image. What happens to the filmic romantics when sentimentality is seen as dead as Christ? Whatever happened to Frank Capra of Capeside? Sentimentality is dead, and we have killed it. Who can defend static sentiments? 90s popular art deliberately parodied and ridiculed ethos and rejected ideology. Kevin Williamson was certainly one of these postmodern madmen and troublemakers who stripped it bare and tore it down. Kevin spent most of his writing on Dawson's Creek up to this point, experimenting with cliches disguised as send-ups. Dawson's Creek's finale features philosophical truth in defense of sentimentality, masquerading as postmodern cliches disguised as send-ups within a takedown of self-referential frameworks. Williamson had something intensely important to say about life imitating art imitating life. Check it out, because this is everything. It is both a rejection and celebration of teen hyperbole. Williamson takes ownership of the show's outdated verbal deconstruction of teen angst and composes a dissertation in postmodern diatribe. Part funeral for the cinematically godless and part baby shower for the new believers. Michelle Williams as Jennifer Lindley. This is it. This is why you have to know and understand. Williamson gives us an archetype on her deathbed. Jen is dying from heart failure, but not before she's given birth to a new sincerity disguised as newborn archetype, a baby to be raised by the aging surviving archetypes, her friends, Jack, Dawson, Pacey, Joey, and Grams, the tropes that bind. Jen, our dying and undying muse, bad girl staple of capeside unreality, the filmic profane to Joey's virginal cinematic holy of holies, Michelle Williams is a national treasure and one of the finest screen actors of her generation or possibly ever. I would argue that. 
She came into her own on Dawson's Creek, and through Jen Lindley by Abby Morgan's death late season two, Williams was experimenting with pitch, delivery, posture, and pathos, Michelle and Kevin, Williams and Williamson. By 2003, Michelle Williams' performance on the show was mind-bogglingly layered, complex, sophisticated in a postmodern sense, and unexpected and inspired. Williamson had to kill Williams. She's the actor. Her performance, uh, the writing behind her, the way she had been captured for years, Michelle's Jen Lindley is the archetype who transcended philosophical restrictions and surpassed genre limitations. Her archetype was full, and she was different. A remarkably dynamic character that clashed with her static counterparts. Jen Lindley had to die, and Kevin Williamson had to write her out. Williamson writes, To have Jen know she will die soon. Abruptly, unfairly, but sincerely. On her deathbed, he has her say to Jack, Because I am going to die, like everything else in my life, I don't really know how to do that. But I'd like to not screw it up. I'd like it to be something that I get right for once. She says later into Dawson's camcorder, objectified one final time, It's not important if you believe in God. It's important that you believe in something. Williamson took Dawson's Creek to transform a superficial trope, a bad girl muse, into something truthful and worth believing in. He didn't make her more human, awkwardly when presenting archetypes within deconstructed formats. To humanize is counterintuitively dehumanizing when dealing specifically with the philosophy of a filmic acceptance of unreality. Jen's symbol changed itself in real time. Jen Lindley seemed to claim supernatural ownership of her artifice. The Jen Lindley character possessed artistic agency. At the beginning of the episode, All Good Things, dot, 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 Jeremy Sisto admonishes the audience for not possessing the show. In this case, Dawson Leary's Metamax, The Creek, styled precisely after Dawson's Creek itself, based on the friends he knows as the archetypes they will forever be remembered as and for. Not derivative, but wait, wait on that point. Sisto's character posits that the show isn't possessed by its audience. Rather, the audience is possessed by the show. And of course that's the case. Kevin Williamson deliberately set out to correct the show's course to finish it right. Dawson says, life has no opposite. Dawson Leary had long been the show's shameless sentimentalist in the tradition of Spielberg and Capra. He's nostalgic for the creek days that possess him. His nostalgia possesses him. Dawson, the often punished cinephile, has made a name for himself in television by this point in the show. He tells Joey, Somehow, even if you don't choose me, I feel we'll always be together, he says. You and me always to be echoed by the recreations of it on his television show, The Creek. Life imitating art imitating life. And Joey says to him, you get to live twice. Archetypes like Dawson Leary and Joey Potter get to live a countless amount of times deconstructed or entirely earnest, philosophically astute or disengaged. Dawson, having been a character based on Williamson himself, is also a writer of postmodern teen melodrama like William was and has always been. You get the idea that Williamson was perhaps correcting his own life, or at least realizing several different lives and timelines through his cinema, specifically uh, the syndicated cinema of Dawson's Creek. What Dawson makes aren't necessarily tributes of sentimentality. He represents an entire culture who respond to and comprehend life in cinematic terms. By this same token, what Williamson makes are not necessarily postmodern takedowns of American attitudes, however self-aware he can be. 
Dawson Leary and Kevin Williamson provide the same end product, the sentimentalist and the ironic postmodernist. It's life imitating art that imitates art imitating life. Filmic unreality upon many filmic unrealisms that forever speak uh, and forever seek to be as moving and inspiring as real life. Real life that takes its dramatic cues and contrived literal stage direction from the filmic unrealities that are based in actual emotion. Living twice or thrice or infinitely, indefinitely, until you get it right. And the art transcends beyond itself because the art is sincere and, it's, and it sincerely explores true life cinematically fulfilled. True life cinematically fulfilled. Destiny and fate are concepts that don't belong in our lived-in reality. These things thrive cinematically to give our lives to the holiness and profanity they truly deserve. Our lives deserve to be both holy and profane. Kevin Williamson, a postmodern architect of sincere unreality, gifts his life and his audiences with the romanticism, the destiny, the real world refuses to give us and give to him, give to anyone. The unapologetic sentimentality postmodern life rejects is gifted to us by Kevin Williamson and Dawson's Creek. Our lives are allowed to be both holy and profane, contradictory, truthful, nostalgic, and deconstructed. In a way, Williamson passes a torch to openly queer characters as Jack is chosen, selected by Jen to raise her daughter, our new archetype, in her death. Williamson, uh, a queer writer, a queer creative, a, a genius in his own right, was um, a pivotal figure in uh, uh, gay representation in popular media, especially in the 90s and early 2000s. Jack promises to his dying existential other, to Jen, his hag, she will know love. Jack expresses how he's tired of being first, tired of re-educating communities, and Jack doesn't want to inspire anymore. Our gay archetype has been fed up by being reduced to simply gay archetypal. He wants to raise the new feminine character eternal, external, born of the muse, the bad girl, the complicated blonde stranger from New York, the lover, Jen, Jennifer, the whore, the Madonna, the teenage queen of integrity, Lindley, Michelle Williams, Jen Lindley, her offspring, progeny, her daughter, Williams, Williamson, raise her in belief, with belief, as an unknown archetype of sincerity, a belief we've earned through our deconstruction by reducing every ideology to dust. We've earned the artistic right to believe in belief and know love. Kevin Williamson was never trying to break the notion of destiny and fate at all. He was trying to honestly repair them. He was desperately attempting to mend, to repair nostalgia, to make something artistically honest from things that are conceptually unreal. God. I feel completely devastated after that ending. The series finale of Dawson's Creek it has fucked me up for days. I'm still fucked up over it. I can't get over it. So much power, so so many sophistications, so complicated. Unfathomably complicated. Kevin Williamson. You fucked me up, man. Thanks for watching this video. I feel like you needed to understand this. You needed to understand. Oh.